Ready? Mm hmm? All right, this is the June 26th, 2023 Safety Committee meeting. In attendance is our Chief of Police, Dell, our um, Code Enforcement Officer, Mr. Canty. We have Councilpersons uh, Martin and Councilperson McNamara. I believe the Mayor Southern will be coming and going. Um, not a whole ton to discuss today. Uh, those who pay, those who um, pay attention to the village council meetings will remember that the last police report showed a slightly lower volume than a comparable time last year. So hopefully our summer is going to be more of a tranquil one. Um, the major thing that I wanted to discuss was to um, feel out how people feel about the addition of some radar um, speed limit signs on the entries to Minerva Lake Road. Those would be the uh, highest incidence of perceived speed complaints and I figured that perhaps a little warning on the entrance ways may help alleviate those concerns. I reached out to Radar Sign or ANA Safety um, and I received a um, estimate for two of the signs and they threw a couple other options on that we could go for if we wanted to. Um, so I can pass those around, see what we think about them. Um, I don't know. I, I know we had spoken, or I know we had heard from the police that it's, that we don't have the hard data to say that it is a genuine speed issue, more of a perceived speed issue. So I'm hoping that if we could settle on something like this, that it will have everyone be more cognizant of their speed. Um, we have, um, if we if we choose to go with these guys, we have a lot of options. We can do um, the speed itself. It can have, if, if it's triggered, um, at a certain speed, it can have you, it can have it say slow down. It can say too fast. <coughs> if we wanted to um, get a little bit more involved in the process, we can have it um, say what the fines are for speeding. We can have it say uh, school zone if we want to put any near the schools. Um, there are also interesting options that uh, can flash um, white light, which would simulate a camera, even though we don't have them. Um, oh, that's smart. Trick people. In a sense. Well, a little bit of slow down. And a little bit of um, you know suggestion never went. You know, never never hurt anybody. Um, there are also blue and red. Flashes, if you're going too fast, you can use, um, I don't know, it, it all depends on, you know, if we decide to go forward, what options we'd like to choose. Um, so, I can pass this around. It seems to be, they get, they speak to their accuracy within plus or minus one mile an hour. Um, I remember when I did my ride along, that's about comparable with the police um, on board speed measurement devices, aren't they? The plus or minus one? Yep, that's the industry standard. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Um, at any rate, I just thought that, you know, this might be a, a good good thing to discuss integrating onto at least Minerva Lake Road. And if we want to pursue anything with the school zone, you know, flashers to make people doubly aware, because I know we have signs out there and lights out there already, that we could um, consider entertaining it. So, 
Does that price include yearly or whatever monthly maintenance? That's what I was going to ask. Is this like the collection data reporting software is 550 but is that something that we, like Chief would come to him and he monitors this or is there updates to it? I think that's, and then I assume this is us just buying it, so mm -hmm. they last as long as they last. Yeah, they have, um, you can get batteries and you can get solar um, set up, which on some areas in town, I would expect the sunlight to be good enough for solar. Because um, you have some fairly bright spots out there. Um, that's my understanding. Um, should we go? Should we want to continue going forward? I can get some clarification uh, on that. Well, first of all, it's going to be solar and battery because we can't run electricity to the yeah. To the signs. Yeah, yeah, that's. So they're that, all solar and battery. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't assume there were any electric options. But yeah, I mean, any thoughts, feelings about how this might work, or? I think uh, I'll be the blunt in saying that I'm not going to, I think you're not going to slow down an Uber driver that is in a hurry and a DoorDash driver and um, buy a sign. I mean, you have speed limit signs that are 25, they're ignoring them. So you can put as many flashing lights and as many certain things if they have a quota or they have something. And I'm not saying it's right. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying... You can put down those small kids at play. You can do all that. I'm not saying don't do them. I'm mm -hmm. just saying these are all ways that are great. You might slow one person down, and maybe that's all you're looking to do. Um, the police presence is there. I know. Oh, I just absolutely. Saw, I know I just saw a post that says they haven't seen an officer pull over anyone. That was actually they have not seen. So I like to. I, well, I don't I like have, to. So they're incorrect. Exactly. So, so have I. Um, you know, I, always the additional presence and always that kind of stuff in that particular area. This isn't the only area. I know it's one that's currently being complained about, but the speed trailers, the flashing lights, the this, the that, I, there's a cost to any of them. I don't think the cost is, is going to outweigh saving a person's life if that's what it does. I think council just needs to determine if that's what they want to do. I mean, the perceived speed, I drive through there, multi obviously, many, many, many times a day, as most residents do. Mm -hmm. We have our same five to eight people that are continually saying that people are going 60. Um, I don't see it as being as big of a perceived issue as... I wonder if it's possible to get to 60 on some of those curves. No. Um, but I also think that if you're talking about Minerva Lake Road, just be prepared because you're probably going to end up putting one on to accommodate some of the other people. Just expect that they're going to want or demand ones in multiple other areas as well. I, I just, I don't see a flashing 30 making someone slow down. I want to just kind of add, I think this idea and concept is really cool. Like, and the, like the flashing, the technology that's involved, like especially like being on Cleveland Avenue. I just fear at the price tag, um, being residential, like this would work on people who already obey the law and they kind of realize that That's, they're speeding. Yeah. But if I was a speeder, I and I know when, and I shouldn't say this, but when someone has to go somewhere, we don't care about things like that. You're just going to speed. Um, and I, I, don't, I, don't, I like the idea, though. I'm just afraid that it won't really have much... So for the people that don't, you know, I think it'd be sorry. I think it'd be great for the people that kind of abide by the laws, but the people mm -hmm. that yeah. For me, if I saw if I was going thirty one, I would slow down. But I'm not the person they're they're concerned about. They're concerned about the one or two people a week that are. I would be on board. If that's kind of pricey though, for sure. That's the only thing I'm. Just, I well, think it's cool, really cool. All right, what's up, Chief Tom? Yes, yeah, I was going to say, what, do, you, do you have any, like... In, I mean, yeah, your, your, opinion opinion is the, your, your opinion is the one that I... So, you're all correct. I mean, everything you guys said, I haven't disagreed with the thing you, you've said, except for maybe the sign placement. Um, Where were we talking about? I was thinking Minerva Lake Road. Minerva Lake Road, but he was talking, like, at the entrances. And I'm like, well... Would, you got to get far enough in. Yeah, that's true. Up to that's speed a good point. That's a good point. So um, where we have the most of our speeds on Minerva Lake Road, the east end, um, that's where we get the majority of the speeds on Minerva Lake Road. On the other end, people say they're coming in off of um, off of uh, Cleveland Avenue at 50 miles an hour, and I'm like, I don't know if there's a car made that can take that to 50, but 
I suppose some Formula Ones have come through, uh, come through the uh, village. Um, but the uh, uh, I've sat, I, I've worked radar throughout all the streets on this village. Um, Maplewood, after the uh, after the curve, um, the little straightaway there before the turn at the end. Um, as you're heading like from Cleveland to the basketball court, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, you can get some speeders in there, but typically 35s, nothing like extravagant like you know the 40s and 45s you get on Minerva Lake Road. Um, the west end of Minerva Lake Road, which we had complaints about, typically it's just that little straightaway right there before the curves. Um, but people don't get up very fast because they come in off of, um, off of uh, Cleveland Avenue and they have to immediately go through oh, that yeah, little turn. Curves. And then they get the little straightaway. Not to say people aren't yeah. punching it and going because we do get some speeds there, but they're kind of rare. Um, but the, uh, the other end is, is just, I don't know, people come in off of 161, cut down Farview, and then go down to get to uh, Westville Road, and they just aren't, aren't cognizant of the speed. So, a little flashy light at the bottom of the hill um, on Minerva Lake Road going westbound, would, or eastbound, would be maybe effective on those drivers who don't realize that they're in a residential area for whatever mm -hmm. reason, and that it's 25. That might help. Okay. Um, so it's like, no, but I'm looking for any kind of solution the to. But the people who are um, constantly um, going, the delivery drivers, the uh, people who just are scuffles, who don't care. Um, mm -hmm. It's not that siren won't do anything for that. Yeah. And if they go, yeah, I know how fast I'm going. I would also uh, worry that they the, use it as like a high score kind of thing. Yeah. The other, and that's and, rare, but uh, for teens maybe, yeah. you know, but. Um, they can also just record their their speedometer for that, mm -hmm. so it's not a that's not as a, a concern for me at all. The other thing that it might do is, and you know I don't know how hard these things would be to move, but we already have existing signs up, and if we get complaints, we move that sign to the area we get complaints at, and perhaps the people would see that. 30 miles per hour looks really fast, but it's five over. Mm -hmm. And it's not the 50, 45, 50 that they are Perceiving. that believe they're seeing. You know, they don't have any they don't have any reference. Mm -hmm. Especially when you get a transit truck that's delivering for Amazon. Yeah, they look like they're moving when they're really not going terribly quick at all. Yeah, so um I, I know that before you all were uh, um, council members, we did do a traffic study. Mm -hmm. And we, we ran this thing, um, it's called a stealth stat, and we ran this thing um, pretty much on every street in the village just to see, to get a picture over a week's period of what we were looking at for speed. And we did it during the warmer months so we, could get, mm -hmm. so we could get you know a very clear picture of where the problems are. And the problems were the west end of, uh, or east end of Murrow Lake Road. Mm -hmm. um, some over on um, Maplewood. But the rest of them, there was just an occasional um, speeder. And that's kind of what we're getting on, you know, enforcement as well. Okay. Is we're, we're getting a lot on Murrow Lake Road, the west end, and the occasionals in the other places. Um, the guys patrol around, they'll patrol an area, they'll park, they'll run radar for a little bit, or they'll set on stop signs and run stop signs for a little bit, and then they'll patrol somewhere else and do it there. And that's what they do unless they're answering a call or going to help out another agency. So, mm -hmm. um, I don't know. I think, I think it can help with those people who generally follow the law mm -hmm. but aren't paying attention. It's going to stop them from speeding, which could be important, especially in those areas where we don't have sidewalks. Um, yeah, so maybe but, towards but that. Also, area, but it might also help, like some people realize that they've been complaining about speeds that aren't there. 
And again, I, I do think we're probably seeing a lot of that. I just I, I agree with you completely. I've heard. I'm just going to pick three conflicting uh, stories I was reading on Facebook. Some of the comments and some people were talking about having speed bumps in the neighborhood. Um, I'd rather not do that at all. Um, and somebody said that I'm always on Winter Lake Road and I don't see anybody speeding at all. Yeah, we did. And some so of the people might be the people that perceive more of two miles an hour over is 45 mm -hmm. and not actually 25, you know. Right. Um, and I know we've had signs in the past that stated how fast you're going and we learn from, well, we take our history and we learn from it. So the kind of success we've had from the radars, I don't know if there's, we wouldn't do that great and broke, if I'm not mistaken, the trailer. Did we have these broken. kind of sign before? We had a big trailer. That no, okay, okay, okay. And, okay. It, and I the radar set, I was going to try to look at it, but it, it's in fact broken, um, and it was quite pricey if I... What is yeah. one of those so it was Several ten, thousand. Ten grand? Ah, yeah. Uh, yeah, probably something like okay. that. And there's different variations, too. Like right. you can At least you can move those around. around. You can That's go, yeah, true. You can go cheap, and, you know, we got to put a hitch on a car, and there's other... Right. Things got to do, but um, that uh, the speed trailer basically um, was there, and we would put it in the places where we had complaints, mm -hmm. and everybody was like, "Oh, look, everybody slowed down because I can see the speed now." <laughs> and there was no real difference. I don't know. You know, did it was it effective or did it just give people something to a really good example? Briar Rose going into um, uh, Lakewood. Yeah. Uh, we had complaints that people were coming off of Maplewood on the Briar Rose and then boom, boom, up to the curb. So we put the speed sign down just past Alder Vista. Okay. Speeds went away. <laughs> Nobody was speeding anymore. Um, and, you know, and then it became, after a while, people that were complaining in that area learned to judge speed and they they stopped complaining about the excessive speed um, I, I honestly being here since 2015 it is my firm belief that it is perception versus reality okay now driving faster than I want you to is a legitimate complaint Yes. If they have small children that are playing and they, they just feel like these cars are coming by too fast, that's, you know, we, we try to do what we can to help them out. Mm -hmm. If one of these signs, placing them in there, and like I said, if they're easy to move around, like, I don't know how much they weigh, if it has to be on a special pole. Yeah, they look like they're mounted on regular, kind of those, like... If, if it's the regular pole, regular stakes, and we can put it on there, then we could just move those things. Maintenance can just go take a sign down put that up on that area, and, and then we just move it around when we need to. I'm not going to tell you, I just tried to zoom in oh. on this picture. I've done that too. <laughs> on the, I've done that with like old photo albums. Just try to... How about, um, so it sounds like a lot of people, from what I gathered, they kind of just want to feel safe. They want to see the police presence more than anything. Um, so what about if we had like a operation sweep or something where... We don't like speeding in Minerva Park, and we're going to get strict about it. Like it, So there was a comment. You know. I'm just going to say that the comment that one of the ones that was, well, it's the mayor's job to basically tell the chief that we want it to. Uh, basically, Lynn forced Chief Nusi to give everybody a ticket that was going one mile an hour over. Was oh, no. Donna Capecchi's, I, I, if you want to read it, it was, I'm, I'm paraphrasing because I just kind of glanced at it that, I don't know what that we have a different I don't know type of. We have, we, you and I have a different way of, you know, this was a recent one that I don't make our police department, that it's my right. responsibility to make our police department if that's the way that we want it to be. And that's not the way I want it no, to be. No, we have, we have a professional um, police department. Right. Like, we trust right. Chief Delp to do what is exactly. correct. Exactly. Yes. And I, I, think, I think the one thing that people forget is a lot of times it's residents that are doing this. Um, and the last thing you want to do is if somebody is only going four miles an hour over, and I, I understand it's important to some people that they never go over that, and there are some people that maybe they really don't. Um, but I don't want somebody with a $150 speeding ticket because they were running a couple minutes late Two to go get, hour, yeah. yeah, 
So that was one of the comments on there, and that's not the village I want to live in. Um, you know, right. people continue to post about how it used to be this. People were scared to drive through Minerva Park. We that's had a not reputation. Good no, and, and but that was a comment that was made numerous times without continually going back to, you know, the eight people on Facebook that our job is to make sure that people do feel safe, that people, um, you know, whether it is perception or whether it is this or that, that we're actively looking for ways that we can make people feel, you can't make everybody feel safe. I mean, that right, they're not going to do. But like he says, if it is something that we can move around, if it's something, I mean, Nothing is a dumb idea. Um, yeah. You know, yes, you can spend too much money for certain things, but, mm -hmm. you know, if it really does do some of the things that would help people in general know what's going on. I think the, the third and, not the third and final question, but the other option is is whether or not Chief believes that we need another patrol person during the day that only does radar and stays... I, I don't even know that that's a possibility. I don't even think that's Meaning, necessary at all. I don't either, but I'm saying... Are there times in which we could use an additional person during more business hours if they are on a call or something, but somebody that doesn't? Well, when you talk to the complaints of the speed complaints, it's all, all the, time. the time. Exactly. Um, so it's like, do we put more resources during the morning hours? Or at later. Afternoon, after work, um, during lunchtime, at night? Like do you when, when, when are the, do you see the speeder speeding through your, your road. It's all the time, yeah. Chief. It's, yeah. it's, I can tell you it's maybe once. I've personally seen maybe one, maybe once a month there's a crazy guy or whatever going through the neighborhood. Right. And and I don't even know if they're a resident or not. I can't contest to that. Once in a while does it happen? Yeah, they're getting lucky, and it's only a matter of time before they get caught in mm -hmm. River Park, to be honest. Um, I agree with that. I don't necessarily think we need to have every single police car every single corner of the neighborhood 24-7. I'm, I'm not saying that, but... Maybe just like a day where we have an additional one or two. Yeah, just maybe a day, kind of. yeah. Is there, so I, again, I, I completely trust and believe and have seen, you know, the officers in Minerva Park going from place to place. Would it be beneficial to maybe change up their locations so that like other people see them or? Like, like random spots you mean? Kind of. Well, like, I mean, every, I'm, I'm sure everyone has like, you know, kind of like a spot they prefer hanging out to do their I think you, you know, have. Like, um, I think he really does, and I'm not. I'm not trying to speak for him, but I know anytime we get issues about the basketball court, we hear. There. Okay. We he does move them around okay. based on things that he hears and sees, but I don't know in general. For example, we've had the complaint that you got on Minerva Lake Road. Yeah. And I sit there across from Valley quite a bit. I see him all the time. I get this. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And and. And honestly, it's for the, that person's benefit mm -hmm. because I know he wants to see an officer sitting there. And I mean, I will get the occasional 30 coming through there. Um, and it's usually the people heading to the pool because you got to get my kids to the pool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, so I usually, <laughs> I usually flash my lights at them and then they, you know, it's just that, that mom trying to get the kid to the pool. Mm -hmm. Um, or, you know, it's after work um, in that four to seven mm -hmm. time period mm -hmm. where you just get people cutting through. But again, we're talking about the, they're still between 25 and 30. And there's a hill there. Yeah. I, so, I so it's like, and, and I know they don't, they don't see me because I watch them on the radar and they see me, they look at their speedometer and then doop, they slow down. <laughs> so... It's not like they're coming through at 40 and going to cops and, and dipping because they would get a ticket. Mm -hmm. So, um, it's, but that's kind of back to the signage. Um, yeah. That's what that sign does. It just flashes out and says, hey, you're going 28. Mm -hmm. And you're like, oh, okay. Yeah. So it kind of does yeah. the same thing as seeing an officer's car. Yeah, that's true. That's so it true. just puts the speed in their mind because if they're focused on what they're doing. Mm -hmm. and that. That was I think hat. that's the number one thing that I that I would say that I do like, and this is also, just because it does record. It like, would give us data. It, yeah. it gives you the data that you can go back, and again, I, uh, if we could find one that is, I don't want to say easily movable, but movable. I mean, not everything has to be super easy, but... and Ideally. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it is what it is, but it would be nice if you could... Because we, like the trailer, I mean, it was nice that the trailer could be moved to a couple different places throughout the village and and again it might this is the system that we use to do the traffic study around town oh that was cool 
Um, it's people basically see it. it's basically just a plain box. We've been mounted on telephone poles, trees, whatever we could find to mount it on for the area that we were wanting to study. Um, and then we would basically it downloaded all that data. So we ran it. We ran it on Minerva Lake Road East. We ran it on Minerva Lake Road in front of the PD. We ran it on Minerva Lake Road in the area of Valley. We ran it on Minerva Lake Road on the East End. We put it on Farview. We put it on Wildwood. We put it on uh, Woodley. We put it on every single cut through road where we generally were getting um, the uh, complaints. And you know, we would have a high speed of in the 40s, and probably, I'm not, I'm not gonna lie, that was probably the cops responding on a call. Um, we just, it just tells you what the speeds are, the time of day, and stuff like that. This was the thing that Brian was asking that we should, that believe we should have in the meeting. So, um, if the, I mean, yeah, this would be, if the goal is to get, um, the ability to do traffic studies because we can put that anywhere. We can put it out on Cleveland Avenue and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know that there were people complaining that we were working speed on Cleveland Avenue, but when you talk to the residents who tried to get out or get in from Cleveland Avenue, that's what they complain about. Their complaints are, I'm taking my life in my own hands trying to left on to Cleveland Avenue because cars are coming through there at 60 miles yeah, an hour. Yeah, trying to left onto Cleveland is pretty exciting sometimes. So. So, you know, we sit yeah. out there and we, we enforce that speed that we have jurisdiction to do. Yeah. So, and additionally, there's businesses there that kind of like to see us sitting in their lot as well. Mm -hmm. So, um, they pay their taxes, yeah. so, you know, we, we do that, but we can do these studies just to kind of show um, what the actual problem areas are. Mm -hmm. So, um, and then you can direct the officers to go sit yeah, in that area. And for you. Say, look, here's where the areas are. Here's the peak times. Um, just enforce during these times and then do that. I think that we think that'd be a reasonable next step. I mean, this is a much better. I mean, financially, this is a whole lot cheaper to to run another one of these. I mean, but the other part, to, and I'm not again, I'm not the money bank here, but there's also not a rule that says you know. I, you can do one of those and see if they're movable or find out if they're movable and do something like this. You don't have to do just I mean, yeah, one because that would knock out, you know, $3,800 yeah. off this bill to just do one. And Oh, it actually knocked the whole price in half. Yeah. So, no, I mean, that's just... This was the thing that, they, that council was talking about. Mm -hmm. When they were talking about it, that was what they were talking about. I, uh... Forgive me for saying this, but I kind of, this is... I believe this was before my time, the first time. For the rare occasion that we do have one or two speeders, yeah, you know, like whatever time period, I don't know if, like, you know, when you look at things on the cost level, does it justify the cost? I don't know if either one of those would justify the cost. Are we going to do that much good in the neighborhood to justify that kind of price tag as opposed to what Chief said? Being, we've done a really good job in the past of being like you have done a wonderful job of having you know officers at certain times of the day, especially in this years alone. We've had probably no complaints at the basketball court. None so, that I've been made aware of. I ride my bicycle every single day over there. Um, I see police officers there every single day. I think that's everyone's working together. Um, and these people that do speed, I'm going to start asking our residents, I want you to get out your telephone and, and get that license plate number. Maybe, I know can't nothing be done unless the police officer actually in fact sees it. But this way, maybe this person comes to the neighborhood, they don't live here, maybe they did something. We have somewhat of a record, maybe for the future. I don't know. That's a, Working together, that sounds like a good, more, you know, solution, I think. The residents working together to kind of work with police to, to curb such things. No, that's helpful. Um, so the stealth stat helps to uh, for resource allocation. Yeah, if, that's what I like. If we if we know that during certain hours, because like I said, we have a complaint that all hours of the day and night cars are flying through here. <laughs> all right. And we know that's not accurate. Right. <laughs> okay, but that's that's the perception. 
the, I don't know. This is, look at, this is what's going on. Every time I come through here, I sit out here all day long and I watch them. They're just flying down this road. And then we set them to enforcement and we don't see it. So what what is the actual issue? This thing, we put that up, it gives us some data so that we go, oh, you know what? Between four and five, there's an uptick on Minerva Lake Road in this section um, of speed. So resource allocation, if I'm going to put somebody there at noon, when I know that everybody's obeying the speed limit or traffic is very light, or do I tell, hey, I want some directed patrol on this at this section of, of Monroe Lake Road from this time to this time as much as you can force the speed? That's the most effective solution, I think. Yeah, maybe, uh, maybe, maybe we find that there's one car that's speeding through there at 5 o'clock yeah. every day. <laughs> Just to get a little right. more and then we're but done. It might be. But it might be. But, but then, you know, when people come to meetings and they say, hey, yeah. people are speeding on the road all the time, yeah. we can sit there and go, well, yeah. is it all the time? Because we've, we've done these traffic studies and we just can't, we can't see it. We yeah. still have this, right? We're st no, no, oh. we'd have to get it again. Oh. No, we. I borrowed it from another department, did, oh. and it yeah. was and it was on its last legs when we used it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, so I so don't is, even is know. Is it something that we, you can rent, not not have to buy? I mean, how I often don't know would who you, you would use it, it from? Pardon me. City of Westerville. Would City of Columbus <laughs> or Westerville, where London Township maybe have one, we could ask around or. But you're asking for it to be probably five, six, eight weeks. Yeah, that's true. To being able to use it. Yeah, it was, well, it's uh, three grand. I mean, having our own is not a bad investment. I mean, do we know what the is the upkeep? Yeah, because you're going to probably use it, it every mean, single summer. Yeah, in my opinion. Well, that and there's other reasons that it can be used as well, just to see what the volume of traffic is on Farview, mm -hmm. because it counts the number of cars. Mm -hmm. This is one. This is the during the school hours and during you know off hours and stuff like that how many cars are traveling in an area at one time so um, so there might be some um, just general traffic study um, uses well yeah I mean our last traffic study was how many years ago and you know the environment around this area has changed I mean that might be so, it's just an option yeah. Um, just something to think about. I know that it came up, so I went ahead and asked. Uh, asked. Uh, um, How long does something like this take to get? I don't know. I don't okay, know. add it to the shopping That's cart. One of each. Oh, no, right. So one of each. Seventy-four, ninety-three, thirty-two. So. Um, so actually, cheaper than two of these. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's nice. So doing a traffic study just allows me to direct mm -hmm. my resources. So what's the time frame between traffic studies? Would it be, or is there any set like we typical only do it when pattern? Like, like an actual traffic study? Yeah. We only do it when we have a new project or something like that. Okay. And that was, they did it for the schools, they did it for... Yeah, and, the, and they did it. And they had the, I don't know if you guys remember, but the little... Um, Little groups. hoses that went across the road. Oh, so yeah, that's what yeah, those yeah, are. Yeah. Yeah. So as you drive, it goes ding ding. Uh -huh. On the one, it records a car going this direction because it hits the one first, then the second one. What's the volume coming in? What's the volume going out? That's all that's I've doing. I've never is, known what those are. Those are just counting cars. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you. Yeah, you learn something new every day. See? Um, that's what we pay them for. Mm -hmm. But well, it's, it's not counting. It's not figuring out speeds and stuff like that. It's just okay. about I know how to save us money on that. So instead of spending three, four thousand dollars on getting accurate, we'll just ask residents, hey, if you guys start to see speeders and what time do you guys notice it happening, we can just start asking them. You can ask them all you want, but they're the ones that are saying that they're going 70. 70 every single okay. hour of every single day. Right. So yeah, yeah. I need, and, I but need it, data. I right. need data, data, data. That's if you the don't only have, thing we can work off of. I think yeah. the best data is going to come from the officers. Right. And we're time. trying to give the tools for them oh. to do so. No, yeah. I think so that's... What, yeah, um, as I said, I, I've... Eight years. Mm -hmm. I've been working the streets of Minerva Park, and... I know where, and, and the cops, they know where the violations are most occurring because that's where they go to get something to do. Mm -hmm. They don't want to sit on 
on East Bridge trying to catch a speeder because nobody speed on East Bridge. Right. Okay. So they're going to go to the places that generally have speeds, and they know they start to figure out as they work a shift what that shift, the the flow of that shift. Oh, you know what? It's coming up on rush hour. I'm going to go sit on um, one sixty one Cleveland or whatever. Yeah, or I'm going to go sit on um, Farview. Farview. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm going to go sit here, and they're going to monitor the the um, I know the mornings stop signs mm -hmm. at the four way. You go sit on the stop signs at the four way. It makes everybody stop. We know that those are the residents leaving mm -hmm. that are rolling to the stop sign. So we pull them over, remind them that they live in Minerva Park and they need to go out by rules. Yeah. I have a question. Which, if you were to pick one of these two tools here to make your job better, is there one that we haven't mentioned? Or if you was to pick out of these two or three, which one would you pick to make your life easier or better? I guess is. I mean, that was something that I would get at too if we were to go with either one anything yeah. which would you find more effective i mean you're you're a subject matter expert and i right. whatever so you say i trust certainly um surreptitiously recording the speeds of uh of vehicles without their knowledge is going to give you truer data mm -hmm. than the sign that's flashing you're going 31 true and they slow down okay so that they do two different things sign mm -hmm. That's the, the speed limit sign that records is going to record its effectiveness, not the true nature of the issues. So the stealth stat is actually going to record what, what does it look like in reality. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I want reality. And, oh. and, that, and that's helpful to us because now we go, because once we get charts and stuff and it says time of day and you see... Mm -hmm. uh, a bar chart that says, oh, look, we have the most volume of traffic is coming through at this time on these roads. And some of that is kind of intuitive, like we know in the mornings, everybody leaves the village. Mm -hmm. And in the afternoons, everybody comes back to the village. But during the daytime, there's just people cutting through on doing general errands or just out and about. Mm -hmm. Right? And in the evenings as well. So we can't catch the anomalies all the time. Mm -hmm. We have to be right place, right time. Yeah. But we can, this could definitely we can help certainly increase our odds if we know that on a certain day and time in a certain area of the village, there's more likely to be a speed problem than not. Okay. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. It also helps us that if somebody says, hey, we got speed in here all the time, we go, great. We put that up in the area and see if that is in fact the issue since they can't give us an accurate timeline of when the issues are occurring. Mm -hmm. And those will monitor, tw I mean, obviously 24 hours a day. Yeah. So yeah. 2 a.m. if you, if I was definitely. It does. It, it, and like I said, they, the battery in it lasts about eight days or something like that. So we get. Oh, good time. So we get a whole yeah. week of, of, you know, is Saturday or Sunday an issue? Is it through the week during the mm -hmm. rush hour times? Is it. You know, uh, a lunchtime issue. Is it a dinner Uber driver issue? Yeah. You know, is I it, definitely think this is a worthwhile investment. So I, I thought it was cool. I mean, it was good data that we got the last time. It was really good data because it, the amount of actual speeders was nowhere near it what was, the perception. It, it was far less than I. Than any of us even imagined. I was expecting. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I, I'm sure that you, I'm sure that we could put this to good use, especially if it's been a number of years since we did it last, and having one of our own. I mean, we can rent it out to other agencies. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There you go. Well, yeah. and then the other part is if you did it over by the pool this season, and then mm -hmm. do it again in end of September and see if it's the pool people, and then we can start adding another fifty bucks to all their memberships. Mm -hmm. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> You but part. there's yeah, there's different times of the year that you can do different areas and see what's causing an issue. Again, over by the basketball court, is it an uptick just because it's summer and mm -hmm. it's, you know, kids or what is it? Mm -hmm. I feel so bad for the basketball court because it's a whole first impressions thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It is. You, you guys know the first time you meet someone, your first impression of them is usually your last impression. And 2020 was an awful first impression. Awful. <laughs> Great. Awful time to have no control over a basketball court right mm -hmm. because everyone was like shut it down i'm like we can't we don't own it mm -hmm. that is that is belongs to mi 
And MI wasn't, they didn't care. They were like, oh, you don't care. It's, you know, you guys wanted a basketball court, here it is. Have fun. Um, you know, it's like, uh, but it was, it was an issue. And, and no one is, is arguing that. We had other anecdotal stories, though, of, yes. of like these people with guns, but it was like, we didn't get called. Why weren't the police called when, Why when you were threatened by Why someone with a, with a firearm? And they're like, well, I don't know. I just didn't think that much of it. I, then apparently you weren't threatened that much. So, um... That's a pretty big deal, brandishing a firearm to... But, in, in front of your children. Right. So, um... So these, these stories and everything just became like this... This court is people going to die. And we're like, you know what? We do have an issue down here. Let's spoil the milk. So we directed the patrol. We started pulling over the cars that were speeding coming in, driving with expired tags, um, whatever we could find, violations. Mm -hmm. We just started stopping everybody. Hey, man, did you know your license plate light was out? We just wanted to tell you that. And, uh, oh, wait, you don't have a driver's license. What's up? Oh, wait, are that drugs? Hey, and, and so um, it became, we spoiled the milk. Mm -hmm. And we solved the issue because the difference between 20 and 21 was night and day. Mm -hmm. But the perception, that, first, that first impression of 2020 is still lingering in a lot of the, the people's minds yeah. that especially live close because they remember the 20-person fight that happened down there. Mm -hmm. You know, and when we got down there, of course, fights last minutes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we respond in minutes by the time we get there. Everybody's kind of dispersing and nobody wants to know. I didn't see anything. So, um, but those did happen. Mm -hmm. And we, we did respond to those calls. Oh. I don't but, believe anybody would doubt, or I, I don't believe any reasonable person would doubt the effectiveness or responsiveness of so the park police. That, that directed enforcement to that area, mm -hmm. um, you know, solved the problem. And opening the parks and the rest of Columbus helped as well. Yes. Because yes. that was the only basketball within a 10-mile radius, basketball mm -hmm. court in a 10-mile radius that was open. And the nicest one in a 20-mile yeah. radius. <laughs> so it, it, it attracts a lot of attention. And uh, so I feel bad that, that I feel bad for the court mm -hmm. that it, it suffered that stigma and still to this day kind of has that stigma that even started to affect the building of a shelter house. Yeah. yeah. So... Um, I suspected that that was what my perception was of what everyone's. It's just like I said, was. first impressions. Mm -hmm. If the basketball court was built in 2019, yeah. we we don't have this problem, mm -hmm. right? Right. I mean, yeah. I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. Who knows? Well, so, but here we are. Yeah. Um, what I would say is that if if I have to allocate my resources, which are patrol officers and time. Mm -hmm. And I can tell them that during these specific dates, these specific days and times, we have an, a potential issue. Please direct your patrol there. It's a lot like fighting, fighting wildfires out west. Mm -hmm. You put your resources on this fire over here. You get that out. One springs up over here. Okay. So we take our firefighters from over here and we put them over there. So and this, then they start fighting that fire. So this would probably be a this stealth stat would probably be a better. Um, tool for helping figure out where to best target enforcement. Then. As far as speed, yes. Okay. Do you need, um, and this is maybe a Jeff question, but do you need appropriations and things for that? Do you have that to where you could actually get it done sooner rather than later? Or we would just bring it to council on, because we don't need approval to do this. It's we just need the money. Five, uh, yeah, I don't agree. As long as the money's there. I don't yeah, know. I don't okay, know. Okay. We, we would we have to just, go through Jeff, finances. Yeah, so okay. I'll talk to Jeff. I know that um, a lot of a lot of my budget is spent this year just on the projects that I already had mm -hmm. um, planned for this year. So maybe yes, that is a, short maybe that is a 2024 solution. I don't know. Okay, yeah, um, that's fine. Because if we have good data from here, then if we do want to pursue some little friendly reminders, we'll have a better idea where to put them in the future. I'm not. I just want to say I'm not opposed to the friendly reminders. That's if we had one friendly reminder and then mm -hmm. the data and then move both. You know what I mean? That's exactly. actually. I'm, I'm, I'm just playing, I was playing a little bit devil's advocate, but I want to reiterate what, what David said. He, he's absolutely right. We want to make sure you have the tools that you need. So maybe between now and next year or whenever you see something that's better than what we got picked out, definitely, you know. It should be movable. Let's just got the, um, there we go. 
Well, it depends on installation. Yeah, um, as like, long as it's minimal. Right. Yeah, just got a stainless steel pole mount hardware. I mean, so all we need is um, we need a stainless steel pole. Yeah. That's it, yeah. Yeah, it'd be, it'd be movable. I can't imagine it wouldn't be. Depends. Depends on how it's mounted. Like right now, our speed limit signs are on the green. Like right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Green with the holes in it, go all the way down. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, if it mounts on those, you know, I mean, how, I don't know how heavy it is. Plus, you have to mount it in such a way with the um, uh, solar panel faces south. Yeah. And just, you know, there's, there's a lot of different... Um, there's a lot we don't know. Well, I'm writing down these questions so I can shoot them an email so we can figure yeah, just out. Just how easy is it yeah, to move? Can we move it? Does it have to be their company that moves it? Does it have to be, you know, does like if we move it, does it void a warranty? You know, I mean, there's a lot of unknowns there. Um, but I'm sure that... Those know, are some good questions. I'll, I'll shoot them an email today on that. Okay. Um, how... If we were to put up the, the, the warning sign, where would we exactly, do we have a location where we might want to put that? Where we'd start it? Start it, is it good? yeah. Well, like I said, southbound, or the eastbound, uh, eastbound, that's right. eastbound um, Minerva Lake Road coming down that hill. Yeah. Perfect, we, yeah. We, that is a never-ending source of speeders. And that's good because I, when I said that the you know, entry and exits of Minerva Lake, I didn't mean like right there. I guess I should have been more clear, a little farther in, like at, at, the, at the beginning of the runs. Yeah. Um... I mean, it's hard to speed where all those cars are. It is. Yeah, the coming from Farview westbound because of uh, um, Garrett's friends all parked along the yeah. river. Like he's, he's our safety. That's that's that that's that speed bump that you oh, were yeah. talking okay. about. Yeah, we got that's we fun. have our own natural speed bump there. Yeah. Well, let's see what we can do to move forward with this, and then I'll follow up with. And we these also gentlemen. have we also have the natural speed bump on Farview. Mm -hmm. That slows the vehicles going down toward the school. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, it's just yeah things to consider and think about. All right, what's next? Um, yeah. So just to recap, it sounds like we would like to go forward with the um, stealth stat, and I will follow up with the. Um, questions we have on the radar signs. Next is pretty brief. Um, this is for Mr. Canty. Um, I just wanted to give a update on the code rewrite. So stop me if you've already had it yet, but um, at the last council meeting we discussed um, the addition of specifically having, you know, a need of permit for the driveways and I believe a couple other things that are still being hammered out because I know you've been inundated from residents with questions about driveways so that's going to be made a lot more clear and a lot easier on your end in the oh, rewrite. I, okay. I, okay cool. Thank you. Yeah um, those were the two major things that I had or the one major thing and one update I had so um, Legislatively, do you guys need anything from my end? Any anything that we might need appropriate? I know I will have to figure this stuff out. Is there anything else on your radar that you'd like to see appropriated in? Any projects that you need more financial assistance with? Okay, so um, you know we have two flock cameras. Yes. I know that at one of the council meetings, someone had mentioned they're getting a third flock camera. It's been a while. I can't remember. If it came up before, or after, or during a council meeting, but it was brought up. Okay. Um, put an additional flock camera on far view coming into the schools. Well, I can see. I can see that being beneficial. Um, yeah. yeah, because yeah. The, the thing the thing is an automatic license plate reader, and it looks for wanted people, escapes, missing children, beautiful sex offenders. I mean, all those things will alert us that there's somebody in that area. Um, I was just contacted by Flock, and there's a. They're raising their prices to, three thousand per camera per year. Currently, we're paying twenty five hundred per year per camera. So we should move on that quickly then. We can lock in, the twenty five hundred for five years. If we sit there and say, okay, we're gonna, we're gonna keep the cameras for five years. Um, they will lock in that twenty five hundred dollar price. Beautiful. If we add the third camera, 
it will also be locked in at that $2,500 price. So what time frame do we have we need to move on this by? Um, well, that's the question. They double billed us for some reason they think we haven't paid this year, hmm. but uh, finance assures me that we have, so they're trying to resolve that. So our contract was up June 16th or December 31st. I have no idea which one that's going to be. But okay. the end of our fiscal year is December 31st. Um, if we were going to add one, it would be something to um, take the council okay. from the committee. Well, you would have definitely my support in doing so, so I can yeah. bring that well, up. I mean, it's, like I said, it's $2,500 additional per year. Mm -hmm. That's not next, any huge amount of for money the, enough. For the next five years. Um, so... If it's that beneficial, I'd like to see one of every interest in exit of Monroe Park. Yeah, that, that would be nice. Um, Westerville just solved a, their their shooting that they had. Their By one of those? Shooting, or one of ours. Oh, we definitely need this. Um, because they had a vehicle description, and oh, they put the vehicle description into Flock, and because we share our cameras with Westerville Police, Westerville Police was able to see that it um, passed our camera and we were able to get the license plate, track down the owner who was driving and the passenger who was the shooter and they got charged on both of them. Nice. So. Yeah, you definitely would have my, so I can bring that to the next. How many more do we need to make the whole neighborhood complete? <laughs> well. Because that'll make like a shield in our neighborhood per se, you know? Yeah, I mean, there's, there's one, two, three, four, five, six entrances, main entrances to Minerva Park. We need it. You got, we got, uh, you know, Maplewood, Minerva Lake, Woodley, Wildwood, Farview, Westerville. And Jordan. And then one on Jordan, but Jordan's an in and out, and typically we don't have a lot of through traffic on Jordan. I would recommend to council that we have one of these on every single entrance and exit because if it's that beneficial, Okay, yeah, especially in the schools. Let's, let's oh. do the math real quick. Oh, right, right, right. That's right. A, lot That's a lot. So right now we got two. We're talking about putting one by a school. Okay, so that'd be three, which is seventy five hundred a year. Okay. I thought we already added another one. No, we didn't. We um, were double billed. It, it we're yeah. just talking about. It just mm -hmm. came up. Maybe it came up. Do you remember if it came up after council, before council, or during? I can't remember, but yeah, I don't. Re I don't recall this, but I definitely do like the idea. <gasps> We have two. Yeah, it's like a modern so we school, school, you know. We have two schools. See, I thought we added so, another one. Never mind. And, and to, just to go back, this all happened in 2021 because mm -hmm. of 2020 and the basketball court, mm -hmm. which is why there's one at Maplewood mm -hmm. and one at Westville. Yeah. We originally, we debated whether putting it at Farview mm -hmm. and Green. Excuse me, Farview and Green Line, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because then it sealed off the entire south end. You couldn't get in or out without passing a camera. We ended up opting for we ended up opting for Westville Road because of the amount of traffic coming off of Westville Road. Well, that's and, that, and that cut through. Mm -hmm. But if we have one on Farview and Westville, so mm -hmm. it would cover the schools. So I definitely think the school to answer your question, we would need one, two, three extra. So that would be fifteen thousand per year for the cameras every year for five years. And what are you thinking, one? And, and then, He's thinking one. And then going forward. Well, but it's, I mean, here's what I would say. Start with one more and then. And the, the school entrance, the Farview Road entrance is a very pertinent entrance just because. Yeah, now we also have the ability to move yes. the one on Westerville. We can, the company will come out and for $250, oh. they will mm -hmm. put it wherever we like. So we can move that camera from that location to another location, but then it opens up Westerville Road, which just that. solved the shooting. I know, I was just gonna say, I don't wanna do that. I don't so so yeah. we're thinking that it might be best to just put an additional one there by the schools. Mm -hmm. I agree. And it would be there by, it'd probably be stuck there in that landscape area um, by uh, by the, the speed limit sign, the, you know, the big uh, school zone sign. Nice. Um, so it'd be, in there at some place in that location. So that everybody coming in, going out, you're gonna get it. Um, out wouldn't help us as much because they're on 161 and gone before we could even respond. But coming into the area, it would be very helpful. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, so let's bring that. Do we and, have the money for that? And, you know, and just on a side note, 
Um, I have no recommendation of leaving flock safety. Um, we were one of the first agencies here in Central Ohio to install these. It was Upper Arlington and us. That was it. Since then, Whitehall, yeah. Ohio State, Reynoldsburg, Westerville, Dublin, Westerville, everyone is putting these in. Yeah, Clinton Township. And we are now sharing that information. We just recently had the stolen Maserati that was taken from the car dealership. Mm. No plates put in black Maserati into the search and include all the cameras here in the area. We were able to track it down to the area around Mifflin Township. Nice. We were able to determine that it was down in that area and within, within a day, they were able to find it at um, the church, parked at the church down there in Mifflin Township. So, and it was returned intact to, to, the, uh, to the owners. It'll need, nice. to be, it'll need to be rekeyed, but um, you know, I don't know how that works. But it's better than losing the entire Maserati, mm -hmm. right? And, you know, we, we also have some lead stuff that we, we gave to the detectives for the uh, um, suspect. So, I have no um, recommendation to not do mm -hmm. this. Oh, it definitely sounds like it's very beneficial. Yeah. I think a third camera around our, our big row of schools would be absolutely a beneficial place for it. So... I, I think if we have the financial ability to move forward with that as rapidly as we can to lock in our good price, then we should absolutely we pursue it. Um, it's what I said. There's a question about that. I have to follow up with finance because they billed us in March. We paid it, or April. They billed us in March. We paid it in April. Did you appear to buy? Yeah. Let's we got another bill in June saying we didn't pay in April. And we're like, yeah, we did. And then, so June sixteenth was our was our term, um, our annual. Yeah. So they're like, hey, you know. So they contact us and said, we got this thing going. We're raising our prices. Or if you guys sign the five year contract, you can mm -hmm. lock in your prices mm -hmm. for five years. Like I said, I I don't plan on taking these away. Right. And as long as we're leasing them from them, they maintain them. Mm -hmm. Like they've come out and they've done maintenance on the batteries, they've winterized them, they do all the stuff that they have to do to them. Nice. So we we don't have to do anything but just give them money and get access to the data. Beautiful. Yeah, I, I definitely think we should move forward on that as expeditiously as possible, and that location is an excellent choice. Oh yeah. Now, even the school opens up. Or now that being said, two. If we had four cameras. We could pretty much lock down everything from Minerva Lake Road and Farview south. You could not get in or out of the village without passing a camera. I'm for it. Um, you'd have to come through North Bay, but if we put if we put a camera there at North Bay and Minerva Lake Road, anything coming in from the west side, they'd have to come past the PD the cameras there they, to get to the other end. So between Farview, Westerville, and the South mm -hmm. Village, that entire area would be covered. I'm for it. I think like-, like So like, that would be $10,000 a year <clears throat> for the next five years. Do we have that? I mean, of course, we chalk with finance, we're getting it available, but if we have that kind of money to lay out for the next five years. I, I can't imagine we don't, but I would like to no, have whether or not we have financial to do reassurance. An, whether or not we have to do an appropriation or not is what we would have to find out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's probably because it's got to come out of the fund. And so right now I believe that the flock camera system is in our PD budget oh, yeah. under, a, under a line for flock, which was set at $5,000. Okay, so just need to increase. So we would need to increase the flock camera plus another $500 for installation. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Because it's two hundred fifty dollars per install. And maybe even an extra one move, just in case we want to decide. Yeah, okay. and maybe just an extra two fifty in case mm -hmm. we put it in and one. we go, oh man, we made a mistake mm -hmm. putting this here. We'd yeah. be better off if we had it here. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Then, then we can like replace that and put it into a different place. Always round up. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> I'm so bad about that. So, 
just in case I messed up. Just something to think about. Uh, we're happy with one. We, we re I recommend at least one at Farview. Mm -hmm. um, and if not, then we're, I need two hundred and fifty dollars to move the other one over there because I want to. I want to get. I want to. I'm more interested in protecting the school. Yeah. So, yeah. but if we can add one that helps seal mm -hmm. that end of the village, um, and then if we add two, we could actually lock down a big majority of the village. Beautiful. I'd rather have the whole neighborhood because it's like a security blanket to protect the whole neighborhood without having the gated community. It's like yeah. a technological. And I don't know if you're familiar with the flock camera system no. because it all came up while you were not on council. Um, it's new technology, so forgive me, I'm not. It's a basically an automatic license plate reader. Cool. Um, it uh, takes a picture of the vehicle and the license plate. Um, the technology that it has, the AI in it, can determine, make, and model, um, and the state of the plate. Nice. And it's it's pretty accurate. I would say probably about 90-some percent accurate. Um, but it is connected to NCIC. So any once warrants, um, missing persons, um, sex offender registries, um, stolen vehicles, stolen plates, um, anything that's entered into NCIC pretty much. Hard criminals type. Yeah. Uh, violent offenders, yeah. Or that type of thing. So you can set up, like in, on the MDT in my cruiser, Yeah. which... And you're getting real life data just like that as they're coming in so the neighborhood. So as it pops through, it'll pop up on my thing that a stolen vehicle just came in on off of Cleveland Avenue. Oh, we need this. And, and then I go to that area and look for the vehicle. Uh -huh. Yeah. So it's an, like an immediate notification. There's immediate not notification. It's real a, life. It's within thing, seconds. Yeah. All right. We well, need that. It sounds like we well, definitely have some good things going forward. On um, let's work on getting the um, stealth stat. Um, I'll follow up on A and A on the um, radar sign, and then let's talk about appropriating. There, you can have that. Thank you, sir. And then let's get with Jeff about appropriating enough for a third, possibly fourth camera if, um, or, you know, provided we can lock in that good rate so that we can, you know, be as financially um, sound and smart as possible. Um, do we have anything else to discuss? We'll have a round table to close it out. Is there anything else you need? Nope. That's I covered. I covered everything on my agenda. I I sent the agenda to her. I thought okay. <laughs> um, all right. You'll get a direct email next time. Nice. <laughs> okay. Yeah, if that is everything, I will make a motion to adjourn. Second. All right. We are adjourned.